Will and I like to have little projects that we can work on together. And a project we've been working on for the past wee while is our upright piano. Uh, we transported it from the UK and it travelled fine, but it's a very, very old piano. We estimate that it was probably made in about 1850. So it's coming on for 200 years old. And it has evidence that it had been restored in the past, but a lot of the um, componentry internally had come apart, repairable quite easily just um, with a bit of glue and getting some felt in and cutting it. And Will had the harder job, he had to make replacement wooden pieces. I had the easy job, I just had to cut up felt and glue it on. So we're getting towards the end of it now, um, but we've discovered that a couple of the keys need a little bit of fixing. So this bit here is attached, this top bit's attached to this bottom bit with a tiny, tiny little piece of vellum, um, which gives it a little bit of flexibility. I don't know if you can see that. But in these keys, um, that had split. So Will's replacing that, and he did a bit of research, and he's replacing that with um, belt sand paper. <laughs> I think that's what it's called, something like that anyway. I um, mean, he used it successfully for other parts of the piano that he's also mended. So we're getting towards the end. We've also booked in a tuner. Um, because apparently tuning it's very difficult. I like the sound it makes. Like obviously this isn't the sound it would make when it's all repaired, but I don't normally like the sound that pianos make. I will confess that, but uh, this is a different type of piano. I'm no expert and I don't want to get it wrong, but basically my understanding, crude understanding, is that more of this piano is made out of wood than normal and consequently I find that it makes a lovely noise. Anyway, as we are getting towards the end, I've decided that what I'll do is give the keys a bit of a clean and I jokingly said to Will, oh, well I'll probably just um, use a bit of toothpaste and then I did some research and in order to clean the white um, keys, these, these are ivory for deafness, um, but as I say, it's almost 200 years old. Um, anyway, <laughs> you do actually use toothpaste, you use white toothpaste. And I happen to have some of these um, sample toothpastes. So I've just been going, gently polishing it with the toothpaste on a cloth, a soft cloth. Then apparently what you do is you wipe it over with a full cream milk. So I've been using that to wipe it over. Then you dry it thoroughly. And then I've been giving the wood a bit of a dust as well. So whilst it's open, I thought I'd take the opportunity to give all the keys a nice uh, clean. The only trouble is, I don't know if you'll notice, this piano has way more keys than a normal piano or a more contemporary piano. Um, so it's a very slow process and I'm also taking the opportunity to get some of this dust out so it's accumulated. As I say, um, the piano has been serviced in the past. Nevertheless, a little tiny part of me, as mad as this sounds, likes to think some of the dust in here is 180 years old or whatever, um, I think that would be really cool. And I can't help but imagine the people that bought it and the people that have owned it and played it over the years. Anyway, it's been a very interesting project. The piano tuner can't come for about a month, but uh, when he has been, I'll uh, give you a little tinkle on the piano. <laughs> so you can hear how beautiful it sounds. One quick thing, and um, by the way, sorry about the light, it's actually quite late in the evening here and I've got a little torch on, so 
Um, everything's looking a bit more yellow than it is in real life. Um, anyway, uh, one quick thing. I know this probably makes me sound like an idiot. I don't particularly mind that. But I am fascinated to discover that the white keys are um, just veneers. <laughs> I always assumed that the ivory keys were solid ivory. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I suppose when you hit them, you're not really looking at the side of the key. Um, and you can see that it's wood. Um, maybe other pianos the keys are solid ivory or, or I guess plastic or resin these days. Maybe this is an indication that this is an in, was an inexpensive piano, which it was. Or maybe all keys are veneered. I don't know. Anyway, I thought that was really interesting and I thought I'd show you. This is day one of my week of going out on expeditions every single day until Saturday, which is housework day. I hardly ever have weeks like this um, and so it's going to be a very different vlog than normal because I will hardly be at home and I'll hardly be doing any work on the property um, but I will bring you along with me and show you some of the stuff that I'm up to in case it's of interest to you. recording this on voiceover because I had no idea how loud supermarkets were until I tried to film in one. However, I just wanted to show you whilst I was in town my favourite supermarket aisle which is the European foods aisle. And I'm showing you here some of the treats that are deemed to be European uh, foods, the creme de la creme, the fig rolls, the tonics, caramel wafers, marmite. <laughs> Gravy granules, Vimto, Coleman's mustard, Dr. Pepper, and mushy peas. Mmm, delicious. European food at its finest. As you can probably tell, the rain I thought was coming has come. And whilst it hasn't been that sort of massive deluge that leaves everything absolutely drenched and the creek walk is all but impassable, it has been pretty consistent. So I've come up to the recent section of ditch that I dug to see how it's functioning. So you can see uh, the dish is now full of water. Prior to digging the ditch, this whole section of drive would have been completely flooded from there to sort of where I'm stood. So it has prevented that, but as you might be able to see, it has spilled over from the edge um, over this strip of grass and onto the drive. So I feel like digging the ditch deeper isn't an option because the bottom of the ditch is uh, clay and uh, I'm not prepared to dig through that by hand. So what I think I'm going to have to do, um, this is where I stopped. And you can see this sort of nominal section of ditch is functioning. 
but again it's coming over the level of the grass and onto the drive. So I'm going to have to bite the bullet and continue the ditch down. This is where the waterlogged section seems to stop. So I might have to continue digging from the tea tree, which is where my section ended, down to at least here, where the ditch starts to function better, and hope that that's enough to um, carry the water to ensure it doesn't spill over. Otherwise, if that still doesn't work, I'm, I'm going to have to just um, carry on and link up the entire ditch so that it's all draining into the creek but um, that's not much to dig I can easily do that in less than the morning so I'll try that once you've all dried up and see how that goes you find me at home just waiting to head out on day two of not spending very much time at home week we're going to the skin cancer clinic to get our annual checkups and then we think we might head into town to do a little bit of shopping. Our will requires a new pair of boots so I won't film either of those things um, but just so you know what we're up to today. Also as you will have seen um, it's raining today and it's rained for the last four days um, as I mentioned, not torrentially, but enough to soak the ground and then allow me to see what's happened with the um, new section of ditch. Um, so I will be working on that. I think I'm going to have to extend it. But suffice it to say, I don't think I'll be working on that today. <laughs> It was a very productive day and for those of you who might be interested you'll be pleased to know neither of us have skin cancer and Will did indeed manage to get himself a new pair of boots and also for one person in particular you might like to know that I've bought myself a pair of trousers which I think might be a bit more suitable for chainsawing in I hope they put your mind at rest I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Wednesday. You find me in my car this morning because I'm heading back into town to run a few errands of my own today, uh, amongst which I will be getting my hair cut at last. And I will also be applying for my Australian passport. There's also one or two other small things that I'm looking to get done. So it should be quite a nice day, um, albeit preventing me yet again from doing much by way of work on the property. Well, that's me done. As you can see, hair's all sorted. I was going out to fringe. I was growing my hair long and the two things I learnt from doing that is that I like having a fringe and I like my hair shorter. <laughs> um, so that was all very successful and I got my passport application done and I did a few little tasks, um, some of which um, I'll talk about at some point in the future when they come to fruition. Um, but for now I'm off on my way home. I buy a lot of my plants online or um, take them from cuttings. I thought whilst I'm in town I might nip to the local 
garden centre. It's more of a hardware store, but it does have some plants. And I think I thought I'd see what they had by way of things that um, might complement my late summer, early autumn garden. Worth a look, I thought. Well, unfortunately, they didn't quite have what I was looking for in terms of late summer colour. I was even maybe looking for a sort of um, a dwarf grass, but I did pick up this. Chinese pistachio tree. Um, I had been growing one this year, much smaller um, one which I bought online and it died. I basically drowned. Just so much rain. But I really like the idea of it as a tree. I like the idea of trees in the garden that have some autumn colour, some autumn interest and this is a deciduous tree that changes colour. So I'll rethink maybe where I put it and how I um, care for it but I'm glad to get my hands on a replacement and it was actually a really good price too good an opportunity for me to turn down Chinese possession take two I'm not sure how well you'll be able to hear me but uh, since I've been out and about I thought I'd stop off at something on my way and show you this uh, amazing waterfall as I say, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. This is part of the wider hydrological system that feeds into the Buckingham River that I've filmed a few times now. Uh, it's not always like this and sometimes it's completely dry, but uh, there has been quite a lot of rain here recently and uh, further upstream and lots of little creeks and rivulets and roadside ditches of collected water which is now feeding into this. I'll just be quiet for a moment and let you take in the majesty of the sight and sound. <laughs> 